Hello again. It's been two weeks since Endwalker released and a majority of players have reached the end of MSQ, meaning it's time for me to make some guides. Starting with Gathering. Now, Gathering is not my favorite content in the game. It's rather dry, but it is a great way of making money, so it's worth leveling. Last night I decided to level all of my gatherers from 80 to 90 or I wouldn't allow myself to sleep, so the stakes were high. I started with Miner and Botanist and leveled them at the same time, which took me just shy of 4 hours. As I am a disappointment to my German brethren, I wasn't very optimized in doing so, so my hope is that with this guide you'll be able to figure stuff out faster than I did and uh, maybe take 3-3.5 three to three and a half hours since I wasted a bunch of time at the start. I'll talk about fishing later, but it's the one that can be done the fastest if you have guild to spare, but I'll teach you that as well. Now, you're going to want to level both Miner and Botanist at the same time as this decreases your downtime significantly. There's no real reason to not level them at the same time, unless you don't have both of them at level 80 for some particular reason, so in that case I would recommend getting them both to 80 first. You only really have one option for leveling fast in 6.0 and that's collectibles. Since we don't have an equivalent of the firmament yet, there is nothing but to gather things for experience. Leaf quests aren't great as they're not tournament based and the XP gained for the time spent on them is quite mediocre. You could go and just gather things appropriate for your level, but that would take a much, much longer time. So to prepare. Step 0. Set Radzatan and Old Charlian as free or favorite destinations as you'll be teleporting here a lot over the levels. Make sure you have your survival manuals ready and available and activate them too. If you don't have any, you can get them for white scripts at any script exchange. They're not mandatory as we're not going to be gathering that many items, but anything helps. They are however super useful for leveling fishing, so keep that in mind. Also make sure you have Cordial handy. I used High Cordial, but even the regular version should be adequate. You do get a shitload of Cordial from the Gathering Studium quests, so it's an incentive to do those as well. Now that you're ready to get going, step 1 is to get to level 81 by whatever means necessary. I started with my Grand Company deliveries as those give you over half a level and you also have the option of doing your weekly custom delivery turn-ins at the NPCs of your choice. Zloe is the best girl but do look for whichever one has bonus rewards for mining and botany. I forgot about the custom deliveries until I was like level 83 so the earlier you do them the better um, as the early levels are the worst. And by worst I mean slowest. If this isn't enough to get you to level 81, you can do the Studium quests now. Just like the Crystarium, you can do the equivalent of roll quests here and you get quite a bit of experience. The Studium quests unlock at weird levels, so 80, 83, 85 and 88. Meanwhile collectible tiers will unlock on odd levels, so 81, 83, 85, 87 and 89. Since you can only submit 6 collectibles per Studium quest, I do recommend splitting them evenly, so do 3 on Botanist and 3 on Miner. I went kind of monkey brain and submitted all the level 80 quest items on Miner, so to compensate I did all of my custom deliveries on Botanist. Once you're level 81, it's time to proceed to step 2, the biggest part of this and that's farming collectibles. If you're not sure what a collectible is, then I'm not sure how you got your DOL jobs to 80 in the first place, but they're items you gather and submit to a collectible appraiser in exchange for currencies called scripts. Now as mentioned, the first few levels are the worst and take the longest. Collectibles unlock with level, so you can't just rush to the level 83 collectible nodes at level 80 and expect to turn them in for the big experience. You can only turn in collectibles from the same level range as you are, so you unlock the next tier at every odd level. So the first tier of collectibles is level 81, which you'll be stuck farming until level 83. At this point, I opened one of my favorite websites called ffxiv-gathering.com. I use this as my go-to gathering node tracker of choice because I find it has the cleanest user interface. I put it on my second monitor, select the levels of nodes I'm watching out for and I'm good to go. There are plenty of other websites that do the similar things, with Teamcraft and Garland Tools being popular choices for this as well. I did the entire leveling grind with poorly melded Aesthetics gear, which is item level 490. I literally did not touch any other gear until level 90, so it's pretty good up until then. You might struggle a bit around level 87, but you'll be fine. Now I did mention that you can't turn in higher level collectibles until you reach the appropriate level, however you can already gather them and turn them in once you reach that level. 
So I selected the nodes for level 81 and 83 respectively and headed over there as soon as they spawned. This is also a great time to teach you the collectible rotation, and honestly there isn't much of a rotation. They've kind of gutted the entire uh, gathering job um, in Shadowbringers. I know there's optimal ways of doing this, especially if you have best in slot melded assets gear, but I didn't and I was lazy. The only things I cared about when gathering were one, hitting at least tier two and sometimes tier three of each collectible experience so that the experience gain is efficient. And two, trying to gather at least three collectibles per node. The rotation I used is as follows, a very simple one. Scrutiny, meticulous, scrutiny, meticulous. And what comes after depends on what level of collectability you've reached and whether we've gotten any procs of collector's standard. That's it. The better the stats on your gear are, the likelier you are to get procs and how many collectibles you get per node. And there's quite a bit of RNG involved here, but I always aim to use at least half of the node's health for collecting. This is assuming that you have at least 400 gathering points, by the way, so 400 GP. I don't see how you could have anything below 600 at level 80 with relatively decent gear, so keep that in mind as well. Don't hit a node unless you have 400 GP available, as the rotation scrutiny meticulous times two takes 200 GP per use. I play it safe with 600 GP normally in case I get a proc and I can hit a thousand collectability as a result. Now you're gonna get a shitload of white scripts as a result of doing this, which you'll need for unlocking the folklore nodes for endgame gathering, so make sure you don't overcap on these. The script exchanger also sells the tokens needed for the folklore tomes, so make sure you buy those every time you get close to capping. Now all you do from level 81 onwards is gather collectibles every time the nodes spawn and submit them at your collectible appraiser of choice. Do the studium quests as you unlock them as well and make sure you keep both minor and botanist on even experience levels. The studium quest line for these jobs is actually fairly interesting and I did watch all the cutscenes so if you want to spend your time that way go ahead. I only collected collectibles within the two closest level tiers to me. So once I hit level 85, I only collected level 83 and 85 collectibles. At level 87, you switch to level 85 and level 87. You'll notice that some of the collectibles share the same node, so there's a limit to how many you can collect at any given time. As mentioned, at level 87, you might also find yourself struggling with the gear a little bit. The level of collectability needed to hit the second tier of experience is pretty fucking high, so things can slow down a little bit from here. If you have pentamelded 490 gear, you can probably save a bunch of time here. Or if the level 87 gear is an upgrade for you and not too expensive on your server, that's another route you can take. The nodes spawn every 12 in-game hours, which is 35 minutes in real life and are up for two in-game hours, which is almost six minutes in real life. The other thing you'll notice at level 87 is that the node timers start overlapping, meaning that if you're connecting both 87 and 85 nodes, they'll be spawning at the same time. This is where your cordial is especially useful. It's quite easy to hit both nodes in the five minute window, but you have to move quite quickly. This leveling window will have quite a bit of downtime as you'll wait roughly 20 minutes for your next cycle of nodes. There's plenty you can do in that time. Some people craft. I personally just kept doing S rank hunts on my data center while watching YouTube videos. I think the entire 80 to 90 grind is doable within three hours if you get lucky on some of the collectible rotation procs and have better gear than I did. Spending three to four hours to get two of your gatherers from 80 to 90 is pretty good, so I'm quite happy with that. If you were faster than I was, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you did it. Anyway, now that we're done with mining and botany, let's look at the most cursed job in the game, fishing. I didn't have anywhere near as much of a plan for fishing as I did for mining and botany, but it worked out in the end. Some trial and error revealed different methods of leveling, and uh, if I account for time wasted, I spent about two hours in total to get Fisher to 90, but I think you can go faster. You have several options for leveling here, unlike the other two. Some people say the fastest way is to use the studium quests and do collectibles in the same way we did for the other two, but I disagree. If you have gil to burn, you can reach level 90 in like 20 minutes or less by using leaf quests. Just buy whatever leaf quest fish is cheapest on your data center and hand in like 15 or 20 leaf quests worth of fish and you're done. And while I did have gil to burn, it'd be pretty shit content if I just told you to pay to level up, so I only did this for one level. 
I decided to first try the collectible route and I had a horrible time getting the right fishes to bite for the studium quest. After 30 minutes I gave up and decided to see if the new spearfishing minigame could be the secret to leveling fast. Nope, the XP gain from spearfishing is pretty shit. You can spearfish for collectibles and for the leaf quest submittable fish, but damn, 9 fish from spearfishing for a single leaf quest is pretty rough. Not only do you need to learn what size the fish is and the speed that it travels at compared to the other fish around it, you also have to get lucky enough for it to spawn in whatever node you are spearfishing in. So spearfishing, not recommended. Given that I didn't want to do the collectible approach anymore and I was just tired of all the RNG, I decided for a dumber, simpler approach. I used the awesome Google spreadsheet called Endwalker Fishing, maintained by the legends over on the Fish Court Discord server, where they're actively compiling all the fishing information for Endwalker. Love those guys, keep it up. Anyway, here I looked up all the fishes involved in leaf quests. Then I looked up where all of those fishes spawned, and realized that two of them spawn inside fishing locations where only two other fish are present. The Ponderer shares its location with two other fish, and the Proto Mike technically shares its location with three other fish, but one of those has specific catch conditions that you're unlikely to accidentally encounter. So here's my recommended approach for leveling fishing. It's dumb, but it works. From levels 80 to 84, sit at the reflecting pool in Old Charlian and focus on catching Ponderers. You'll need bait to do this, which you can just buy in Old Charlian as well. A variety of bait seems to work, but I just use gold, salmon, roe. Cordial is important here as well. The only skills you really need on your hotbar here are cast, hook, identical cast, and double hook. You could use surface slap if you have a high GP amount or whatever, but that shit is more effort than I care to expend. Now, the ponderer is a single exclamation mark and bites between 15 to 24 seconds after you cast your line. You can choose to ignore all the other fish that bite, but I choose to catch them because they're great experience points anyway. Especially if you have the survival manual buff up, don't forget. Now how do I know how many seconds it's been since the line has been cast? Well, you make a macro, of course. There's plenty of those floating around, and the one I'm using here is straight from the fish cord itself. That way you'll know how likely it is that you're about to hook the right fish. Regardless, once you catch a ponderer, you'll want to identical cast and double hook once it bites again. The combo costs 750 GP, which is why High Cordial is great here. Also, don't sleep on Thalic's favor, it's great for GP restoration as well. Every time you do this successfully, you get 3 Ponderers, and one of the level 80 Leaf Quests needs you to hand in 3 of those. Convenient, huh? The Leaf Quest gives around 2.5 million experience, so you'll be level 84 rather quickly. Once you're at level 84 or higher if you're comfortable here, I recommend you dip and make yourself comfortable at a new location straight to the fucking moon, baby. You'll want to teleport to the moon and head to this little cave over here, where you'll make yourself comfortable and do the exact same thing as we did in Old Charlian, except now you're catching proto mics, and the colors in the cave are pretty funky. And you're looking for double exclamation marks that bite around 18 to 25 seconds after you cast your line. The rest is the same. The proto mic number 987 fish is the turn-in for the level 86 leaf quest. All I did was sit here and fish until I hit level 86 from all the experience I was gaining from just catching fish, and then I headed back to Old Charlian to do the leaf quest a bunch of times. Easy experience. The other leaf quest fish are significantly harder to catch in my limited testing, just because there are several other fish I could bite instead. That's why I chose the Ponderer and Proto Mike because they had the highest chance of biting just by having a smaller amount of fish in the pool that could potentially bite. Big fish in a small pond, you could say. Anyway, given that I took around two hours and I wasted a bunch of time testing alternatives, this seems like the most brain dead and quick way to get this grind done quickly. Now I know some people will hate me for trying to optimize this and trying to go quick when I could be enjoying the experience, but I fucking find gathering so immensely boring that uh, if I can help anyone maintain their sanity just a bit more than I did then I'll have done my job. Um, if you get lucky of course fishing is all RNG uh, you can probably go even faster but honestly if I had to make a recommendation if you have like half a million gil to burn or something just buy the fish like buy like I don't know 50 fish that you need and just hand in the leaf quests Actually, when I think about it, what, each leaf quest is three turn-ins, so if you buy 60 fish for the leaf quests, then you're probably good. 
If you want to, you can also do the studium quests, but they're all collectible fish, and since I had a horrible time getting the collectible fish to bite, I didn't really bother. And that's all for me today, folks. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or not. I'm thinking of making a full level 1 to 90 leveling guide for gathering, but that's going to take me a while to make since I don't have an alt to test on at the moment. I'll probably do craft rates 80 to 90 next. Uh, but yeah, if you found this in any way, shape or form entertaining or useful, please uh, subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. And if you'd like to ask me any questions or if you want to hang out with me, feel free to join my Discord server or follow me on Twitter. Thanks. Hey guys, post-production L here. I totally forgot to mention ocean fishing during the uh, script writing, so I figured I'd bring it up real quick. You can ocean fish, it is really good experience in general. However, I tried doing this as quickly as possible, and I didn't want to wait two hours for an ocean fishing window to pop up. So uh, yeah, if you can squeeze ocean fishing in there, that'll help you save some time. Cool, that's all. Peace.